Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 6, Pauline Hopkins. Like her illustrious contemporary, W.E.B. Du Bois, Pauline Hopkins grew up in relative privilege in New England right after the Civil War. She demonstrated her talent as a writer from an early age, winning a national essay contest judged by William Wells Brown as a teenager. She both published and starred in a musical play about the Underground Railroad at the age of 20. She spent most of the last two decades of the 19th century as a singer and an orator. In the four years just before Du Bois published his landmark work, The Souls of Black Folk, in 1903, Hopkins embarked on a stretch of literary productivity that only a handful of African-American writers could rival. During this period, Hopkins published four novels and numerous short stories, one of which, Talma Gordon, is often cited as the first example of mystery fiction by an African-American author. After 1903, she primarily worked as a journalist and as a stenographer before her life was cut tragically short by a fire in her Cambridge, Massachusetts home in 1930. This excerpt is of the setup of the crime at the center of Talma Gordon. I won't spoil the ending, but only note that as in all good mysteries, not everything in this tale is as people perceive it to be. Doubtless all of you heard of the terrible tragedy which occurred at Gordonville, Massachusetts some years ago when Captain Jonathan Gordon, his wife, and little son were murdered. I suppose that I am the only man on this side of the Atlantic, outside of the police, who can tell you the true story of that crime. I knew Captain Gordon well. I had rendered the captain what he was pleased to call valuable medical help, and I became his family physician. His first wife had died at the birth of her third child, leaving him two daughters, Jeanette and Talma. Jeanette was tall, dark, and stern like her father. Talma was like her dead mother and possessed of great talent, so great that her father sent her to the American Academy at Rome to develop the gift. It was the hottest of July days when her friends were bidden to an afternoon party on the lawn and a dance in the evening to welcome Talma Gordon among them again. I watched her as she moved about her, I guess, her guests moved about among her guests, a fairy-like blonde in floating white draperies, her face a study in delicate changing tints. The dazzling daylight dropped slowly into summer twilight. The merriment continued, more guests arrived. The great dancing pagoda built for the occasion was lighted by myriads of Japanese lanterns. It was a rare treat to have this party at Gordon Hall, for Captain Jonathan was not given to hospitality. We broke up shortly before midnight with expressions of delight from all the guests. I did not fall asleep readily, though. There seemed to be something in the air that forbade it. I was still awake when a distant clock struck the second hour of the morning. Suddenly, the heavens were lighted by a sheet of ghastly light. A terrific midsummer thunderstorm was breaking over the sleeping town. It was impossible to sleep. I hurried on my clothes and stepped into the corridor. The girls were there before me. Jeanette came up to me instantly with anxious face. Oh, Dr. Thornton, what shall we do? Papa and Mama and little Johnny are in the old left tower. It is on fire. I have knocked and knocked, but get no answer. Don't be alarmed, I said soothingly. Jenkins, ring the alarm bell. I continued, turning to the butler who was standing near. The rest follow me. We will force the entrance to the captain's room. In less than 15 minutes, the fire was out and the men began to bear the unconscious inmates from the ruins. The captain was nearest me, and as I stooped to make the necessary examination, I reeled away from the ghastly sight which confronted me. Gentlemen, across the captain's throat was a deep gash that severed the jugular vein. Follow the link at the top of this page to check out the homepage of the scholarly society devoted to the study of Pauline Hopkins's work and the preservation of her literary legacy. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. 
Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.